course, uh, here on the local footy show, from time to time we catch up with uh, household names, legends in the game of footy, to get their views on local footy. And Sean, Benny caught up with a good one recently. You probably haven't heard of him. Probably not, no. Peter Dacos. Dacos. He, he played for uh, Brisbane, did he? Collingwood superstar. Come on, Sean, we caught up with Peter Dacos, a Collingwood superstar. What do you think about uh, local footy for local communities? Oh, I think it's important. It's really what underpins what um, the AFL are doing. I mean, you can't have the AFL competition without the, the junior and local uh, competitions. Because that, that is really the, the feeder to uh, what we know as the AFL competition. Peter, you're always one for the skills. Do you see the skills still in footy today? Oh, yeah, I think uh, footy uh, skills is um, no doubt becoming more proficient because, you know, the kids, I think, these days, I mean, the exposure of football these days is so great that that, that um, the young kids get to see it and they go out and they practice it. I mean, when we were growing up, you'd get a replay on Saturday night in World of Sport and that was it for uh, five days. So, yeah, look, it's... Um, I just think the exposure of the game, um, you know, has made the game, you know, a lot better in a lot of aspects. Some of the kicks that you used to do, grub them along the ground for a goal, etc. Now it's a normal in football. Yeah, well, they're, they're probably working out that it's a pretty accurate kick within 15 metres. So, um, yeah, I think the um, and then they, again, they're. Um, they get the opportunity because if they're, they're at the club so often and training so often and got a ball in their hand, they're so off, you know, they they have the ability to, to make sure they get uh, a skill or a specific skill right. And in this case, uh, they are very good at it and very accurate at it. You never really wanted to get into the coaching in a, in a big way? Well, I was one of those guys that, um, had I have not had media, I coach. So I had a job in media and if you don't, it's either one or the other. If you don't get a job in media, they look for a coaching role and vice versa. So I was one of these guys that got straight into media and, um, you know, uh, you know, uh, earned a living that way. So uh, the game's changed a hell of a lot now. And back when I was probably even when I first retired, you know, the, the, the incentive financially wasn't there. I mean, I've got a young family and I've got to go to work and you know, it, it takes, uh, it's very demanding these days and it takes a heavy toll on uh, family life. So uh, I think you can do it young, but you can't do it uh, as you get on a bit. Do you enjoy your footy as much today as you did? Oh, more so today because I'm not playing it. So, you know, the, um, I'm probably a frustrated ex-footballer, but I don't think the, the wanting to play the game or loving the game has ever left me, you know. So, um, and never, never will. I mean, I started as a young kid at seven, eight years of age playing with the school footy team you know, to uh, retiring at 32 and, and then still part of media commentary. Um, if I'm home and I know there's a football game on the TV, you know, I take control of the remote control and make sure that I'm, uh, I've got the footy going. What was your local footy club? Uh, I grew up uh, playing with uh, Preston RSL. Um, I, I played a year at Clifton Hill uh, Football Club, YCW, and then I moved to uh, Preston as a youngster and played a couple of years there and then uh, I moved to Collingwood when I was 15 in 1977.